Australia's ambitions to become a global financial hub have been put on the back burner lately thanks to the economic downturn. But at a Melbourne conference today, Islamic finance was being featured as a way of promoting Australia's banking credentials offshore. Advocates say Australia's political and economic stability make it an ideal springboard into regional banking markets. Neil Woolrich reports. As the global banking system continues the long process of repairing reputations and balance sheets, some in the finance world are calling for a different way of doing business. Go and talk to the normal mums and dads. See what is happening. You will find that there is a lot of agony in the community itself because there is a grab sort of policy, take everything from others rather than look at it ethically and look at it from a morality point of view. Akhtar Kalam is chairman of the Muslim Community Cooperative Australia, a finance service available to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It has 8,000 members financing share purchases and 2,000 homes and boasting annual turnover of more than $200 million. It operates under Sharia law, which forbids the payment of interest. To make a major purchase like a house, the institution buys the asset with its customer, who pays back rent over a number of years. Banks in the, that operate Islamically benchmark their charges. In this case, for example, the rent that the bank will be charging you for the house. They benchmark that rent by reference to market interest rates. While Muslims make up a quarter of the world's population, Islamic banking accounts for about 1% of global finance. It's still in a start-up phase in Australia, but the major institutions are starting to come on board. The National Australia Bank is planning a $15 million trial of Muslim-friendly loans for household goods. The federal government believes Islamic finance is a growth opportunity Australia can exploit. Australia is very keen to look at this particular thing. Uh, I think um, we should have been looking at this about 10 years back. Uh, but because we have got such a, a big organization like the four conventional bank, it was not very easy to get into it. Your domestic Muslim population is quite small, but Australia could be a major international financial center. Realistically, I don't think that you could actually replace London or New York. But in this time zone, Australia has enormous advantages in terms of political stability, the reliability of your courts. And Mohammed Amin argues the global financial crisis might not have happened if the world's financiers followed Sharia principles. There are lots of things that you can do in conventional finance that you're simply not allowed to do in Islamic finance. And a simple example would be credit derivatives. Credit derivatives involve so much uncertainty that Islamic scholars simply don't allow them. The prohibition on credit derivatives is one of several obstacles to Islamic banking achieving widespread acceptance. Interpretations of Sharia law can differ between regions and even within the same institution. And innovation can be hampered because of a lack of Islamic scholars available to ensure that new products comply with Sharia law. There's no reason why it should be less able to generate credit, but there's certain kinds of credit it would be unlikely to generate. And Mohammed Amin argues there's growing confidence in Islamic financial products. He says the takeover of P&O by Dubai Ports is a good example, funded by a $3.5 billion Islamic bond issue.